All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Haraka Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. All right. And uh, Yahweh is who the world ignorantly calls God. Bahashim means in the name in the Paleo Hebrew, Lashawan Kodash. And Yahweh Shai is the, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. All right. And the Rakaqa Dasha is the Holy Spirit, or the Spirit Holy. Okay? Qua Raka Spirit Kodash Holy. All right? And um, I'm going to entitle this lesson, Why Wasn't Joseph Told What Happened? Okay? And basically what I'm going into is how, okay, there's a few things that don't add up, you know, when we talk about uh, the so-called Christian's point of view on how the Messiah was brought into this world, how he was conceived in the womb of uh, his mother Mary, okay? You know, there's a narrative that seems to be pushed forth here um, over and over, as you can see, uh, Mary's being given very great importance in a, number, in a number of these scriptures as if she's supposed to be looked at as something, as someone to worship, okay? okay? But there are some questions here that need to be answered concerning this whole situation. Um, if you believe that there was a virgin birth, right? A birth of a child wherein the woman did not have sex with a physical man, but rather a baby was put into her womb, for lack of a better word, magically. Okay? So we have to ask ourselves a couple of questions, all right? So I guess I'm going to start here in Matthew 1, right? Matthew 1 and 18. Now, the birth of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost, right, of the Holy Spirit. Okay, then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so a couple questions, you know, that I want to tackle in this particular situation. First of all, okay, first of all, this is this is the scripture that they use to try to prove or say that Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Let's get it. Luke two, and um, okay, Luke two and. Um, to lock in. Scroll up here. Oh, you know what? It's Luke one. If I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be one. I was reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Luke one, and you know, you know, this is talking about when the angel came and told her that she was going to have a a baby. So I'm going to read Luke one and thirty five, and the angel answered and said unto her. The Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Most High. Okay? So, people use this scripture. People use this scripture to say, see, she got pregnant of the Holy Spirit. But you have to ask yourself a question, okay? Whenever this happened, because we know that that, that wasn't the moment when she got pregnant. You know, because it didn't talk about it. It just said... That it was going to come upon her, you know. Therefore, also that thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of the Most High. The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Where is the actual description of this happening? And then the Spirit came upon her, and she became as one that was dead, and she rose again. And the angel said unto her, Thou art pregnant, Mary, you know. And I'm not really I'm not trying to be funny, but where did that where was this depiction at of the Holy Spirit overshad overshadowing her and getting her pregnant? Since this is the narrative that you, you so-called Christians believe, you know, I would like to know where this is depicted in the scriptures, you know. OK, because when we read here, you know, that Joseph, her husband, being a just man, not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her put her away privily. Why was Joseph? Why was Joseph so understanding, you know, because it said that the, the angel didn't talk to Joseph 
until he went to sleep, see? Why he thought, well, not when he went to sleep, but yeah, it says when he went under in the dream, right? Or maybe he was put into a trance, either way. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a dream, okay? So, oh yeah, he was asleep. Then Joseph, being raised from his sleep, did as the angel of Yahweh had bidden him and took unto him his wife. So, you know, he had all this time to lay down and go to sleep and think about it. But until he had went to sleep, he would have had to be considering whether or not to keep an adulterous woman around him. You know, he would have had to been considering whether or not he wanted to keep who someone who would have been classified as a harlot around him or not. Do I want to keep this woman who's been who's obviously gotten pregnant by somebody else because I haven't popped her according to you so-called Christian theories? He was he was having all this trouble trying to decide if he wanted to keep this harlot around. We know according to the law, you know, that a woman who who cheats on her husband with another man. He's not supposed to take her back. Matter of fact, it goes deeper than that. If she's if she's promised to him and she sleeps with another man, she's supposed to be put to death. Let's read that. Let's go. Let's go to that one first. Deuteronomy twenty-two and twenty-two. If a man be found lying with a woman married to an husband, then shall both of them die, both the man that lay with the woman and the woman. So shalt thou put away evil from uh, Israel. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto an husband, and a man find her in the city and lie with her. And ye shall bring them both out unto the gate of that city, and ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not, being in the city, and the man, because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife, so shall that put away evil from among you. So why was that? Why was why was uh, Joseph, you know, who was a just man, you know, who, who kept the law, statutes, and commandments, which we're going to go into that here briefly, um, Lord willing. Why would he be considering? Keeping around this woman who's been defiled at this point, who's been sullied, who's been soiled with another man's semen because he has not been told at this moment where he's considering whether or not he wants to make her an example or not. He's not been told that she has, you know, supposedly had the Holy Spirit overshadow her and give her a baby. He doesn't get told that until the angel comes in his dream. So why is he thinking about this? The only thing that makes sense is because he popped her. He got her pregnant, and if if they would have taken her before the elders in the ceremony, particularly, okay, let's say her parents were there, or alive and, and well, if she would have, if they would have uh, had sex, and the tokens of virginity would have not been present, <clears throat> then more than likely she would have been stoned and been made a public example for the other women of Israel to not be hoes, harlots. In their, to not play the harlot in their father's house. Okay, let's get that scripture. Deuteronomy 22 and 13. If any man take a wife and go in unto her and hate her and give occasions of speech against her and bring up an evil name upon her and say, I took this woman and when I came to her, I found her not a maid. Then shall the father of the damsel and her mother take and bring forth the tokens of the damsel's virginity unto the elders of the city in the gate. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid, and yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. Okay? And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. So let's say that, you know, Mary's parents were alive during this time, which I'm not sure if they were or not. But there would have not been any tokens of virginity to present to them because she was already. That's the only thing that makes sense is that there wouldn't have been any blood on that on that sheet. If they would have went through with the ceremony. And so Joseph was like, dang, I don't want to make her an example. Because this is what happens if she, if this is what, what could have possibly happen to her. And we're going to continue reading. All right. And the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this man to wife. And he hated her. And lo, he have given occasions of speech against her, saying, I found not thy daughter a maid. And yet these are the tokens of my daughter's virginity. And they shall spread the cloth before the elders of the city. Okay. And the elders of that city shall take that man and chastise him. Okay. He's going to get beat. And they shall immerse him in a hundred shekels of silver. And give them unto the father of the damsel. Because he hath brought up an evil name upon a virgin of Israel. 
She shall be his wife. He may not put her away all his days. But if the thing be true, this thing be true, and the tokens of virginity be not found for the damsel, okay, then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house, and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she have wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shall they put away evil from among you. And that, and that public death, that stoning, would have been a public example, which is why it says here, okay, Matthew 1 and 19, and then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. Why? Because she would have been stoned, was minded to put her away, put her away privily. Because, I mean, what else reason would there be for her to be a public example? Okay, if Joseph, if Joseph was, why, why would Joseph care? If she slept with somebody else, why is he so, why is he so gung ho about covering it up? Why is he so adamant about covering up this sin? That she would have done, you know, because like I said, at this point, he doesn't know that she that she's pregnant with child of the Holy Spirit. You know, according to y'all's doctrine, he doesn't know that that's a Holy Spirit child. So, you know what I'm saying? So how why is he so worried about? Well, I got to protect her. You know, I don't want her to be an example. I don't want her to die. Even though she just cheated on me and I can't sleep with her because he wasn't supposed to. If, if she, you know, if she had literally slept with another man, he wasn't supposed to sleep with her no more. So why why isn't there a a scene where she's like, oh, don't do this, Joseph. Don't kick me out. You know, I didn't sleep with anybody else. You know, blah, blah, blah. This is from the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Joseph got her pregnant. That's the only thing that makes sense, man. Why would he be trying to save her? You know what I mean? From from that from that punishment. If she cheated on him, it doesn't make any sense. So, so let's get that where, you know, I want to beat a dead horse. Let's get that word, just man, you know, Matthew 1. Put on the Strongs. 1 and 19. Okay. Joseph was a just man. Okay. Dekios. Dekios. Okay. Strongs G, 1342. Dekaios. Dikaios. Dikaios. You know, Greek is weird, but it's the Edomite language of what you expect. Now, it says here, righteous, observing divine laws. He, this is what that word just means. In a wide sense, upright, righteous, virtuous, keeping the commands of the Most High. Okay? Innocent, guiltless, faultless. You know. Used of him whose way of thinking, feeling, and acting is wholly conformed to the will of the Most High, and who therefore needs no rectification in the heart or life. Approved or acceptable of the Most High. So, yeah, you know, like it's going into, man, he was he was approved of the Most High. He was just in the eyes of the Lord. You know, so why is he trying to marry a woman who appears to be a harlot? You know, because he doesn't get told until later that it's of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he got her pregnant. And so he wasn't surprised when he hit three months and her belly started bulging. And he was like, oh, oh, or whenever she missed her cycle or had her cycle. Yeah, missed her cycle. And he was like, what's going on? And whatever the case may have been, you know, he wasn't all surprised and ready to kill nobody. Because he realized that he got her pregnant. That it was his fault, not hers. Even though, you know, um, <clears throat> so like, yeah, I'm drifting off. I was <laughs> falling asleep there a little bit. But yeah, you know, it would have been her fault. So why would he have been, you know, um, trying to protect her so, so deeply? Because he got her pregnant. It was his baby. Yahweh tries to the seed of David of, according to the flesh through Joseph, through your father. Your seed goes back to your father, not your mother. Okay, so hopefully this was edifying. I'm going to give all honor, glory, and praises to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders, a great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopefully elect. With that, I want to say Shalom.